Hey guys, Adam Katz for DogTrainerToolbox.com, Braving the Wild with Mr. Banjo. I don't know if you could see him. Let's see. Yes. There we go. Out for a walk this morning. Wanted to bring you some really good information to help you grow your dog training business regarding the right way and the wrong way to use your business cards and expectations. So the expectation is you're going to get a bunch of business cards printed up and you're going to leave them in the lobby of different businesses around town. Um, so typically that doesn't work that well. I'm not saying don't do it at all, but in my experience, if, and we're not talking about dog training or dog pet related businesses here. We're talking about your auto shop, uh, the Jiffy Loop, a uh, local Mexican restaurant. Maybe they have a bulletin board. I personally would leave my business cards everywhere I had the opportunity, but only maybe one or two. Um, because what happens is if you leave your business card in a non-pet uh, business, again, like the Mexican restaurant or the Jiffy Lube bulletin board, um, you may get a client here and there, but typically it would be maybe one client a year, which, you know, it is, is still a great ROI. I mean, what's a business card cost? Three cents? And what's your average lifetime value of a dog training client? $1,000? $3,000, dollars $5,000. Five I mean, the ROI is insane, but don't expect that just because you go around town and you leave a few business cards or a few flyers, um, that it's gonna be this sudden whirlwind of traffic to your website and calls on your telephone. Because let's be honest, when was the last time you walked into a business and just casually looked through all of the different business cards that different business owners have left on that counter on the side of the, the lobby. Uh, probably pretty infrequently, and that does happen. It's worth doing with one or two business cards, but here's the, the best way to use your business cards. Number one is through referral relationships. So you make friends with the office manager at your local high traffic veterinary clinic or the vet tech, and you give them 10 or 15 business cards. And every time they see an opportunity, then they have something to give to their clients. That works really, really well. The other way is, suppose you're at Home Depot or Lowe's, or maybe you're out walking your own dog, and you see somebody else with a dog. You approach them. You don't immediately try and sell them. You engage them in conversation. At the end of the conversation, you hand them a business card and you say, listen, if you know of anybody who needs dog training or is interested in dog training or is having a problem with their dog, can you please pass this business card to them? We own a local dog training business and we're trying to expand our footprint. Can I give you this? And 99 times out of 100, they will say yes. And about 10 times out of 100, uh, they will ask you specifically about training their dog. Like how much does it cost? Uh, in which case you're gonna defer and if you can, if you have time, you're actually gonna to wanna to get their phone number and follow up with them later in the day to give them your full pitch or schedule them for your consultation. But if not, if it's a quickie, you hand them the business card. Hand them the business card anyways, let's face it. But that's the best way to use your business card. That's how you're gonna get the most bang for your buck with your dog training business card. Hey, I'm Adam Katz for dogtrainertoolbox.com. Check us out, we've got all kinds of information products referrals to service providers that we've used successfully uh, and all kinds of other stuff to help you grow your dog training business. Take care, guys.